Ruman Vasilenko, Deputy Foreign Minister of Kazakhstan. You've been in Brussels this week for a number of meetings. Can I ask you firstly about your meeting with the European Commission on enhance and the European Council indeed on enhancing partnership and cooperation, an agreement that covers a wide number of areas for Kazakhstan? <clears throat> indeed. In 2015, Kazakhstan and the European Union and its member states signed uh, what is called uh, the Enhanced Partnership and Cooperation Agreement. It is a second generation agreement after the original one which was signed in 1995. And it covers 29 areas of cooperation. Of course, trade occupies like 70% of that agreement, but it also expands into areas such as fighting terrorism, um, uh, small and small and medium-sized businesses, healthcare, public procurement, etc., etc., etc. The agreement has been provisionally enforced since May 2016, after it was approved by the European Commission and ratified by Kazakhstan. But for all those 29 areas of cooperation to be um, in force, uh, it has to be ratified by all 28 uh, EU member states and by the European Parliament. And so far, 25 uh, EU member states ratified, as well as um, th there is a consent by the European Parliament for that agreement. We expect that this year uh, the final three ratifications will hopefully come through. And, and they, they are uh, Cyprus, uh, Italy, and the Netherlands. And in all countries, the process is ongoing. And uh, it is uh, non-controversial, as um, we, uh, all of us, uh, believe that this agreement is very much in, common, in the common interest. You, you mentioned the Netherlands. Um, as we know, there was uh, quite a controversy when the Netherlands was adopting its agreement with Ukraine. They had a referendum. It didn't go through. Do you imagine that there will be any difficulties there on this occasion? Well, um, in all countries, uh, the ratification procedures take place according to their own national legislation. So now in the Netherlands, there is a legislation which requires uh, such ratification to take place by a law passed by the parliament. So this process is ongoing and we expect that it will be completed when uh, the domestic uh, procedures uh, go through. And you also met with the European Parliament. Do they have any concerns about this agreement or is it something that is recognised as, as, as a positive step forward in the EU's relations with Kazakhstan? No, uh, as I said, the European Parliament have uh, given its consent in December 2017 for the agreement by an overwhelming majority of the members of uh, European Parliament. If I remember correctly, something like 550 members voted in favour of, uh, of that agreement. Uh, we uh, now uh, are working within various structures uh, that have been established under this agreement, such as the Cooperation Committee, uh, between um, Kazakhstan and the um, European Union. And our main goal now is to seek diversification of our trade. Uh, the European Union is Kazakhstan's largest trading partner. And uh, mm, there is a great potential for growth. Uh, right now, the EU accounts for 50% of Kazakhstan's foreign trade. But that uh, trade, that exports, especially on Kazakhstan's side, they are made up almost exclusively of oil. 88% of our exports to Europe are made up of oil. And while we can be satisfied with that, we are not. We would like to diversify our, our exports. We export about 800 uh, types of products uh, to more than 100 countries. And we think that there is certainly some various uh, products that we can also process products that we can export to Europe. For example, we have uh, been able to restore uh, the northern part of the Aral Sea, uh, where fish production has now resumed, and we export uh, pike perch to many European countries, frozen fresh fish from, from there. So uh, this is just one example of how uh, diverse our trade can be. Indeed, I mean, many countries that are commodities rich do struggle with the issue of diversification. Uh, this agreement that goes into areas, like you say, SME cooperation and you know, research and student cooperation, uh, will, that, will that help the economy to diversify beyond, beyond these fields? <coughs> Indeed. 
we look at the European Union as a source of investment, but also a source of high technologies. And um, uh, in Kazakhstan, we are implementing a program called Digital Kazakhstan, which will seek to introduce digital technologies in various areas uh, from industry to government administration to education. And in those areas, uh, many European uh, countries lead the way. We are also um, introducing uh, green and greener technologies into our energy mix. And again, uh, several European countries, such as Germany or Spain, they lead the way in renewable energy uh, production. And just uh, a week ago in uh, Kazakhstan, the largest solar power station in Central Asia was launched, uh, financed exclusively by private uh, investment from Germany, uh, uh, Czechia and Slovakia. So um, that just shows uh, the diversity of potential for investment and uh, trade cooperation between us. But that agreement, uh, it certainly creates the framework uh, for legal framework for such cooperation because it also is known as uh, WTO plus. So the uh, arrangements that we have agreed to in the trade section of the agreement, they reflect our mutual commitments within World Trade Organization, but they go beyond that a little bit. And that's why they're called WTO plus. Uh, Kazakhstan is also seen as an extremely important partner for Europe in terms of security and some of the, the conflicts that have been in the, the surrounding area, also a sort of link between East and West. I mean, it, how is that relationship developing um, through your cooperation with the European External Action Service? I would highlight that um, I would highlight the cooperation uh, between the European Union and Kazakhstan on regional security matters uh, within various regional programs that the European Union have. Um, uh, been uh, pursuing under the current strategy for relations with Central Asia. However, the European Union right now is in the final stage of drafting a new strategy for Central Asia to be adopted later this uh, spring um, and summer and to be uh, valid for the next 10 years. And uh, countries like Kazakhstan were invited to contribute to the drafting of this agreement uh, in terms of what we think our priorities could be and should be under this um, uh, strategy. And there, uh, various um, matters are addressed, uh, we're told, uh, such as uh, joint fight against terrorism, strengthening uh, border security, uh, strengthening fight against drug trafficking, but, but also supporting the resilience of the uh, communities, providing opportunities for private sector initiative to grow for connectivity between uh, Europe and Central Asia, but also for connectivity within Central Asia. For Central Asia has become a rather disconnected region in the 25 years of its independent development. And now, uh, over the past two years, there have been major improvements in this uh, matter and uh, as relations generally between all Central Asian countries have improved. And it is here uh, that the European Union can, can be of a particular assistance. Uh, today uh, we've heard that Secretary Pompeo, Secretary of State of the United States, it has mentioned the suspension of uh, possible sp suspension of the intermediate range nuclear forces arms. Now um, I don't know whether you're prepared to comment on this but I realize that Kazakhstan has done a lot of work on nuclear proliferation. It's important because you're a country that's rich in the resources needed to, to make these uh, arms. So what is, if I can ask you for a to comment on that, what is your first reaction? Well, Kazakhstan has always pushed for A, uh, nuclear weapons non-proliferation and B, nuclear disarmament. And we have always supported all and any efforts that the international community um, uh, pursues to strengthen the regimes of non-proliferation and to promote the ideal of global nuclear disarmament. Kazakhstan has suffered from Soviet nuclear weapons testing, which took place on our territory for more than four decades. And uh, a total of um, 456 nuclear tests were conducted, contaminating enormous amounts of land and uh, leading to 
uh, disease and deaths of 1.5 million people. So it's a very uh, uh, hot-button issue for Kazakhstan, uh, for personally for President Nursultan Nazarbayev, who shut down that text test site uh, 27 years ago now, who um, uh, dismantled uh, the uh, world's fourth largest nuclear arsenal that Kazakhstan inherited when the Soviet Union collapsed. So, uh, and who has pursued um, other initiatives, including calling on the uh, international community to adopt a goal of building a nuclear weapon free world by 2045, the 100th anniversary of the uh, establishment of the UN and the 100th anniversary of the first and so far hopefully the only uh, military use of uh, nuclear weapons in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So uh, for Kazakhstan, uh, we will never stop our efforts to promote uh, global nuclear disarmament. We have uh, prioritized that matter, that, uh, that issue during our membership of the UN Security Council and our presidency of the UN Security Council in January 2018. And we will continue to pursue various initiatives to uh, bring uh, the countries uh, closer together in their understanding that the nuclear weapons uh, do not serve as the ultimate guarantee of security and do not serve as the, um, um, and should not be part of the um, uh, security considerations and strategies in, uh, uh, of the international community. Um, it is also important to know that President Nazarbayev, while attending the ASEM summit in Brussels uh, in October uh, 2018, has called on the United States, uh, Russia, China, and the European Union to take, as he say, as he said, responsibility for the global affairs, and to engage in a meaningful, robust dialogue about all the differences that uh, these various global actors have accumulated in the past uh, several years. And he has offered uh, uh, for Astana to be considered as a host for such a potential meeting if there is a desire on behalf of these four key global players to, to engage in such a dialogue, we are prepared to provide our facilities. Uh, of course, it can take place uh, at the UN, for example, and our president has indeed uh, suggested that a special UN session can, can take place to discuss uh, in a frank uh, and uh, uh, open-minded way all those um, difficulties in trade or in security matters that have accumulated. Finally, uh, a question about the visa situation. I, I believe that Kazakhstan has asked for a more liberal attitude towards visas. I mean, I realize that there are many Kazakhs who are already traveling and doing business in Europe. What are the barriers and from your perspective, what needs to change in the, in the near future? And is there room for that change? Sure. Um, the issue of mobility of people-to-people uh, -people contacts is um, also covered by this enhanced partnership and cooperation agreement that I mentioned. And it in fact, this agreement calls for negotiations over such matters with the European between the European Union and Kazakhstan. I would say that um, since 2017, Kazakhstan has offered a visa-free travel to citizens of all EU member states. What we are asking uh, respectfully is that um, a visa facilitation uh, is offered to Kazakhstan, meaning that uh, there is a uh, smoother or less cumbersome process for Kazakh citizens to obtain uh, Schengen visas. Um, Right now, there are various cases where uh, stringent requirements uh, or rather intrusive um, uh, requests for uh, various uh, documents supporting this or that statement, they discourage uh, people from, from travel or from applying for, for their visas. And I would say that uh, about 100,000 citizens uh, of Kazakhstan visit uh, the European countries uh, every year and just as many return. So Kazakhstan does not pose any migration risk to the European Union. What we are asking for is, a, in, is an easier way for Kazakh citizens to receive those visas. Uh, what, uh, we are, uh, uh, what we understand now 
is happening is that the European Union is reviewing its visa code and once this is approved and we expect that this uh, uh, will take place this year we hope to start those talks and we hope eventually to uh, create these uh, easier conditions for Kazakh citizens to travel to Europe and that's perhaps the number one question that we as a foreign ministry back in Kazakhstan asked by our citizens when will we have an easier way to travel to Europe?